called my doctor and it took like a few hours, but eventually they were like, you need to come into labor and delivery. My, oh my. Hey, lovies. What the rudges up, fam? <laughs> you guys. You're here at the hospital. We are in the hospital and uh, it's been a journey. It's been, you're gonna use nothing? It's been quite the journey. And I'll recap everything for you because it's just been a journey. So we left New York. And on, I think, Tuesday, I had a doctor's appointment for the baby. And everything was, like, fine and whatever. And then I started getting some symptoms. I was, like, coughing and itchy throat. I threw up. I had a fever. I felt fatigued, my whole body hurts, it kind of all is still happening. And then I noticed that baby girl wasn't moving as much as she used to, or as she usually does. Like she, there were a few little kicks, but not like a lot. And usually she's like all over the place. So I called my doctor and I felt so sick. So I stopped working in the middle of the day and, uh, called my doctor and it took like a few hours but eventually they were like you need to come into labor and delivery which kind of freaked me out because additional story like when I started getting symptoms we were like let's go get tested but <coughs> there's a spike right now and the holidays are here and everyone's trying to get tested there was like no test that we could do like a walk-in for we scheduled an appointment but I wouldn't have gotten a test until next week so the doctor was just like come into labor and delivery because they needed to monitor the baby and uh, they wanted to get me tested so I didn't vlog any of that because it was kind of hectic and before that I was just kind of like laying on the breath like laying on the in bed very sick and uh, so we, you know, stopped everything, packed up our bags, um, and went to the emergency room and got admitted into labor and delivery. And um, they have spent some time monitoring baby girl. She, they had the monitors in my belly, and she, and then we also did an ultrasound. She's doing great, even though it's very light in there. Um, but she is moving and her heart rate is great. So that's really good. <coughs> so. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm getting a call. I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm having symptoms still, you know, I'm sick, I'm just sick. They did the rapid test, and so they were gonna let us go, but I am 28 weeks and five days today, so I needed to do the glucose test for the baby, where you drink that super sweet liquid, and then they like, test to see like if you have any insulin resistance or anything, and that takes like an hour. So you, you chug the liquid, and then in an hour they test your blood um, so they were just like let's just do that now and then maybe by the time that test is over you'll have your COVID results back so that's what we're doing I just chucked the liquid and I'm just sitting and waiting for uh, for the test results for the glucose test and for the COVID test um, so I'm no longer monitored up. It's 6.09 at night right now. Mike's here, obviously. Um, and what else? Like, I guess that's it, but it's just kind of been like a whirlwind, right, babe? This whole scenario? Yes. Yeah, it like escalated, I feel like, so quickly. Yep. But uh, I, I don't feel better. <laughs> just so we're clear, yeah. I still feel, obviously I'm having symptoms, but the I thought, you just, had, we I thought were, you just had like a cold when it started, and it was just like I, you were like I have a cough, I have a sore throat. I was like that's just not that's not what I'm worried about. And then literally overnight you're like 
hey, so I have a fever of 101 point something, I threw up. It's like, okay, well, that yeah. jumped up a notch. Yeah, it got serious overnight. Like, I feel like everything always does. You know, when you're sick and then at nighttime you're the worst, I feel like that's basically what happened here. Um, before we even came to the hospital, we made the really hard and sad decision to not spend Christmas with our families. Uh, we had my sister's Christmas Eve party on Christmas Eve, obviously, and then we were gonna go to Mike's brother's house. But I was just like, I Christmas had a day. on Christmas Day, yeah. But I just had a feeling like something was off, and I was just like, let's get a rapid test back when we thought we could get a test. And I was oh just God, like, no. you know, right? And I was just like, I feel off, and I was just like, either way, I'm not going because I don't. I want to put anyone at risk if I am or whatever and so at this stage they're basically just like we have to quarantine which is fine because obviously we work from home so that's fine um, and then yeah we're not going to be seeing family this Christmas so that's really sad but this trip did give us a lot of peace of mind for baby girl who is growing and kicking and hiccuping and thriving. Her hiccups are really intense. I actually thought those were kicks. Um, so, so yeah, that's, uh, that's where we're at. Mike is living his best life, eating the snacks I brought. I can't eat, I'm not allowed to eat. You signed up for the glucose test. <clears throat> oh, I was actually giving you that. I'm about to read my book. <laughs> Yeah, and then he's hanging out, so. So, we will update you probably, uh, I'll update you guys probably tomorrow. Mike is getting acclimated to the chair that he's gonna be sleeping in when we actually come here to deliver baby girl. Not the best. Not the best. Well, now you know tables. how to prepare. We were both I saying need, that. I need, I need blankets. I need yeah, I, that's what I said. Up. Remember, I was like, we're gonna have to have blankets in the car. Just in case. Uh, I guess I could maybe sleep like this. Bring your own pillows. We have to bring our snacks and stuff like that, because who knows if we're going to be allowed to roam. It we'll sounds, yeah, it sounds like it's pretty unlikely. They won't, and if Terry didn't say it, they will not let me leave this place because Terry's a suspected COVID person. Yeah. So I was like, can I go to the vending machine? They're like, nah. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> they're like, Normally we let people do stuff like that, but you? But not mm. you, yeah. And I was like, shit. Yeah. I was really in the mood for a vending machine trip. I know, even though we brought all these snacks. I know, but you know, it's always like... You want what it, you it, don't have. You want what you don't have. I was like, man, I would kill someone for a Snickers right now. Ridiculous. So, yeah, we were obviously coming here, so we like kind of treated it as a trial run for delivery. And uh, I think we kind of know what we want, what we don't want, bringing body pillow. I am personally overheating but I think that's like my fever life and anyways we'll update you guys tomorrow but my family they're texting me and asking to talk to me so I'm gonna have to call hey guys update it is a couple days later it is Christmas Eve not how I thought I'd be spending my Christmas Eve which is uh quarantined in my bedroom sick in bed I actually don't know if I said this in the last clip I don't know if we got uh, I don't know if we had gotten my test results at that time but um, after the last clip the nurse and doctor came in and they told me and Mike that I tested positive for COVID so I do have COVID and they sent me home to do home care and that's where i've been um my fever is gone as of yesterday it didn't take any fever medication so the fever is just gone which is great that made me feel a lot better physically um and then yesterday i got hit super hard with like coughing and congestion and uh, our families have been so great and so super helpful and understanding because obviously we cannot do 
any Christmas activities before I even tested positive. I had basically said I'm out on all Christmas activities because I felt so sick. And I was scared that even if I did test negative, if I was even able to get a test, that uh, maybe it wouldn't be accurate. And I just did not want to potentially give COVID to anyone. So I'm glad I made that decision early on, but then I actually tested positive. And so it was, in fact, the right decision to make. So uh, today is my sister's annual Christmas Eve party with uh, like my brother-in-law's family and stuff at her place and we will not be going to that my mom is dropping off food mike's parents dropped off so much food and groceries and medicine last night so grateful to them and so thankful and it's just so helpful because like we weren't really a hundred percent prepared it kind of came on I feel like kind of suddenly, like I had a little itchy throat and I was like, it could easily be a cold and like we just didn't have like groceries and all of a sudden it was just like, okay, I have COVID and we had to like not leave. So we did a whole foods order and they also got us some groceries and brought us some cooked food and like froze food for us to like warm up and have food for and they brought us Christmas presents and my mom my parents are bringing food today as well. We're gonna have so much food where we've gone from like not a ton to maybe like too much food. Um, Michael was able to get a COVID test yesterday, um, but it was not the rapid test. So he won't know his status for like, they said three to five days. Um, we're treating Mike as if he is COVID negative and I am quarantined to the bedroom and cause I have like my own bathroom in here and Mike, it has the rest of the apartment. Um, he's sleeping on the couch, his workspace is out there. He's not working anymore cause it's Christmas Eve and then he has the baby's bathroom. My mom's also going to bring like a shower curtain because we hadn't done anything to the baby's bathroom. So there's no shower curtain there so that he can actually shower in there. So obviously Mike is also quarantining. So everything that's being dropped off by like our families, we have like this safe area in the building. So Mike's putting on his like mask and they come in from outside and then they drop these things off at this glass door and then go back outside. And then Mike opens the glass door and gets all the things. Guys, I have no strength in my body. Like, I hate this because you guys know that I'm always doing things and I'm not supposed to be doing things because I can't not do things. COVID is really, like, humbling me right now. <laughs> um, but I will say that I'm feeling better than I was, like, when I went to the hospital. Baby girl is moving around so she's good too and mike is taking good care of me he made me breakfast he's bringing me water i am going through water like i don't know if it's part of covid but i mean i've also been craving water in general because i'm pregnant but i have been going through water more than i have ever gone through water in my life which is good because i'm supposed to be hydrating but like it's almost burning some how much water I need, like my mouth, my lips, like they're so incredibly dry, like it's uncomfortable how like dried out I feel. I feel like that episode of Spongebob Squarepants where he goes to Sandy's house without a tank, like that's what I feel like. Um, anyways, I thought I'd hop on and give you guys that update. And the other bad news is that I, when I was at the hospital, they just let me do my glucose test there, and I failed the glucose test. Uh, so the glucose test, if you're not aware, is for gestational diabetes, which is like diabetes that you get when you are pregnant. Um, and it has not that much to do with my diet. It's just that your hormones block the receptors to like absorb the insulin it, it, or your hormones block your insulin receptors so there's just like 
more of the sugar in your bloodstream. So I just failed it. Like I looked at my labs and my number was like four above the number that you need to. She's like, yeah, you just failed. So I have to take the three hour insulin test or the three hour glucose test. So that means I have to go back to the hospital, chug the sweet liquid, and they're gonna draw my blood every hour for three hours, which is kind of a bummer, but that's fine. Honestly, I probably just have gestational diabetes because I was reading on it. And it was like, your baby will be like bigger, like higher birth weight. And everyone who looks at my baby says she's so big. So I feel like maybe I just, I don't know. I literally don't know, guys. I don't know. But that's what's going on right now. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a better Christmas Eve and Christmas than I am. It's not terrible, though. Mike and I were talking about it earlier because I was like really sad because he got me like, we did our stocking stuffers this morning because I was really sad and I was just like, this is supposed to be our first Christmas together as a married couple. <laughs> and uh, we were just like, you know what, at least the baby is okay and honestly, I'm okay. Like, I have COVID, but it honestly just feels like a really, really, really bad cold. It could honestly all be worse. Okay. I'll see you guys in another clip, hopefully in a few days when I feel a lot better. So here's to feeling better, Terry. Mm -hmm.